afternoon. We're here with Nick Eskew. I'll let you introduce yourself. Hello, everybody. Nick Eskew here with American National Insurance, and I'm glad to be on today. Awesome. So you are still quoting insurance right now, correct? We are. Yeah, we are quoting and we're actually really busy. I think your homeowner's market is still um, hot around here. So we're working a lot with um, lenders and realtors and buyers and things are still hopping around here. How are you guys doing? We're good. Yep. I'm still busy. You know me. <laughs> Always, right? <laughs> yep. So I wanted to have Nick on here today to talk about what questions you should ask your um, your insurance agent when you're looking for home insurance and make sure that you're comparing apples to apples and not apples to oranges. Right. That's a good question. And when, you know, we get that a lot and it's important for each uh, homeowners to really go over um, their quotes that they're receiving for their individual needs uh, because it can be different uh, house by house. There's different coverages that we can add on. We do a quick quote for a lot of lenders that, um, will provide the most common coverages that we see folks need. And um, we're happy to get those out quickly so that uh, you know you can get some generic numbers and kind of get things rolling with your, your lender. But we always sit down with our clients and really um, dive into some of the different things that homeowners insurance covers and what their needs might be, because it could be different from case to case. And so I thought we would talk, I'm just gonna ask you this question. Most of us know the okay. general term, but what is homeowner's insurance? <laughs> that's, that's a good one. Um, we do a lot of insurance 101 with our clients uh, because they don't always know what they're getting. They know their lender told them they needed coverage. So homeowner's insurance is really just a property and casualty um, product policy. And it primarily covers your home and the stuff inside of the home. And then anything um, on your property, such as fencing, landscaping, shed, if you have one, those types of things are all included under the homeowner's plan. So that's your basic, um, if you will, definition of, of homeowners. And a lot of people get that confused with um, the, the insurance that the lender required. So they think, oh, well, we have mortgage insurance. Well, that's different than the actual homeowner's insurance. So we go through that with a lot of our clients and kind of explain that this actually covers your interest in the home, rebuilding the home, replacing your stuff, all of that, that good stuff that people need coverage for, so. And it's not covering every disaster that could happen, correct? Right, some disasters um, such as, you know, earthquakes, floods, different things require um, different coverages. And it's important that you um, kind of visit about that with your agent and make sure that you have the coverages you think you do. You know, if you're in an area that's prone to, um, flooding, you might want to have that conversation with your agent. We do look up most homes that we quote to see if they're in a floodplain. The lender checks that, you know, we check out some of that stuff ahead of time, but it's important to um, have those conversations. And we usually um, outline all of that with the new client and talk about, you know, earthquakes aren't covered by your standards homeowners insurance policy. You need to um, add extra coverage for that or get a separate policy. Same with flooding, which is the uh, rising of groundwater caused by weather related flooding isn't covered on a standard policy. So some of those things come up um, every now and then and we just talk through them. And we do have different options depending on what the client's need are, needs are to add that coverage when they, when they have a need. So it works out good. And since we're talking about flood, um, the flood. flood. So Our you favorite. Know, what? Our favorite, right? Know, our favorite. So if it's needed, if it's needed for a FHA loan, then it's more money because it has to follow the um, national guidelines, governmental guidelines. Right. Yeah, it can be. So they require. Um, I think the FHA, WCDA, some of those lenders require um, the federally backed FEMA product, um, which does cost a little bit more because it comes with the backing of the federal government. So. Um, it's really good to know the difference between the two. Um, we've had cases where clients have um, gone clear through the process just to find out the flood insurance they got isn't the right one. And those rates can really vary. So it's important to do your homework ahead of time and make sure uh, that you've got the right type for the home that you're buying because it can change just depending on what area you're in. And if it's not required, then it's less money, correct? Exactly. And that's because the, the risk is of it flooding 
is probably less because it's not in that floodplain. So they do have some discounted rates. Um, if you're not in a floodplain, it's pretty affordable. And, um, you know, there's cases where a window well might fill up with water from a storm. It comes through the window, comes in, you know, that can be considered flooding. So there's, there's times when it's good to have that and it's worth the extra premium, uh, just depending on your situation. So we do go through that um, scenario with every client that comes in just to make sure they understand that because you never know. Yep. Is homeowner's insurance required by law? Um, no, um, unlike, you know, car insurance and, and different things, um, it's not required by law. If you own your property free and clear, there's a good chance that you can decide whether you want to take on that risk yourself or you want to have insurance involved. However, when you have a loan on the property, um, you do require um, homeowner's insurance in that case so that the lender is covered. Um, and most people don't want to lose their money on their investment. You know, they uh, want to cover it. They want to have their, their coverages in place, um, especially when we're talking about the whole structure in a total loss or in the case where, um, you know, your belongings are all gone with that, it can really add up. So most people don't self-insure on those things. We, we can take care of it whether you have a loan or not, but it's not required by law. One of the things that gives me a small heart attack is when I'm sitting at the closing table with somebody paying cash and they haven't set up their insurance yet. Right. I say, okay, stop, everybody stop, call your insurance agent. Right, get that done. Yeah, we run into that. We get those calls um, fairly often where they just hadn't thought of it because they weren't asked to get it as part of the loan process. So it kind of gets put on the back burner. So we do uh, quote those pretty quickly in that case and try and get the, the coverage in place for those clients so their investment is safe and protected. So it happens. What are there different types of homeowners insurance that you can get, like the general policy without the riders, or is there just um, one and then you add the riders on? Sure, there are. There's a different uh, type of form. There's an SH three and SH four, different uh, types of forms that cover different things. Um, but the important part is, regardless of the form, you want to make sure it's endorsed properly uh, to give you things like replacement cost. Um, on your building, replacement cost on your roof. Um, each form kind of has some different coverages. And um, these days, you know, we don't uh, really um, talk a whole lot about forms with the clients and the different types of policies. We just make sure that we're getting them the right coverage. And most of the time you can add those coverages to either form. So um, there are a few different types of policies. Uh, some of those are actual cash value. So they're just going to uh, pay out uh, with depreciation, which doesn't replace what you had. Uh, so it's good to have those conversations and make sure that you've got a replacement type policy, uh, both on the structure, your contents, and on the roof. And we see that quite often where um, those coverages aren't there and folks are, are upset. So it's a good idea to ask those questions when you sit down with your agent. Actual cash value on roofs has become a little more common lately, right? So you, it's right. really important to make sure that you have that, that full coverage, correct? Right, yep, and different companies do it a little differently. American National doesn't write an ACV policy. All of our policies on homeowners lines are uh, replacement costs, but there are some out there that still will depreciate. Uh, the other thing to watch out for is the deductible on uh, those types of things. There's carriers that'll do a, a flat deductible for fire, wind, um, and hail, and then there's some that'll do the wind deductible at two or three percent or a copay. You know, lots of different things can go into that. So, part of your discussion should be, you know, in the event of this and this, what am I responsible for, and how much money am I going to have to come up with? Because uh, we've seen a few come in where the deductible is seven, eight thousand for wind and hail, and they thought they had a thousand dollar deductible because that's what it is for fire and theft. So it can just kind of confuse the situation. So it's a great question to ask and make sure uh, that you've got that uh, replacement cost coverage and you're comfortable with the deductible. When you are starting the this process and you know you purchased your house for let's say 300,000, how do you right. decide what you want it covered for, for, for the replacement cost? 
Right, that's a good question. There's some confusion about that because folks think, oh, I need it covered for what I'm paying for it. Well, that doesn't always work out that way because what you're paying for it doesn't necessarily mean it's the same that you're going to have to pay to replace it. So most insurance companies have a system that they build your house in. So we go in and say what style it is, what the year um, it was built, what type of flooring, what type of siding. We build the whole house in a replacement cost system. And then that way we can be sure that um, we're covering it for the right amount. And um, also in your loan amount, you've got the land. And most insurance companies aren't worrying about the land involved in that transaction because we're gonna rebuild your house in that same area on the same land. So there's lots of different things that go into it, but uh, the replacement cost calculator is a great tool for us so that we can make sure they're covering it for enough and um, it's the right type of coverage. So it works out good. And sometimes we ask a thousand questions when people call <laughs> and they get a little, <laughs> yeah, they get a little annoyed, but we wanna make sure from the start that we're getting all the information that we can um, in giving uh, an accurate proposal. And we want, want to make sure there's enough coverage there because nobody wants to write a check for the difference if there's not. So it's an important thing to go over. And I just thought of something. When people are building a shop or something on mm -hmm. their land, they want to mm -hmm. make sure they call and tell you, correct? Because absolutely, if yeah. you don't have that, and I mean, for heaven's sakes, it all burns down or something you're not covered on that other structure unless you added it. That's correct. There's some uh, extensions that would apply for a little bit of coverage, but it's a really good idea to have that conversation before you're building it, let your insurance company know, you know the size and what you're gonna be doing with it so that we can get that covered beforehand. Um, it happens sometimes even with upgrades to your home, it's important throughout the year if you went from you know vinyl flooring to hardwood and you really increase the value of that, we need to know about those changes so we can make sure that replacement cost is accurate. Um, that could be laminate countertops to granite. You know, we, any improvements like that, we really wanna make sure that they're letting us know about that and we can make the necessary changes throughout the year. Um, also, it's important to do a review with your agent. So you set everything up five years ago with your agent, you haven't talked to them since, you probably should. Uh, give them a call. They should be reaching out to you occasionally, um, just reviewing those things and making sure nothing has changed. Um, we see that happen with scheduled personal property sometimes too, where you know you might get a new diamond wedding band on an anniversary. It's high value. It's a good idea to call your agent, let them know, and make the changes to the policy so that's covered. So lots of good info and a review can really bring out a lot of those things. How do you make sure that a diamond ring or a piece of jewelry is covered you bet um, every policy is a little bit different so you'd have to kind of read your policy language um, it usually will cover for a percentage for the theft of that type of a uh, um, jewelry watches furs art that kind of thing so we can actually schedule those items on your policy for you and we just do a quick change form we get a copy of the appraisal on the item or receipt if you recently bought it and we can schedule that right on the policy so we know exactly what the value was exactly what it, the ring was or whatever the case and you can be assured that it's covered that way okay are there so, so one of the things on the homeowner's policy is liability so let's talk a little bit about liability absolutely um, liability um, will extend in a case where you're um, involved in a lawsuit maybe regarding the house, somebody gets hurt and um, it protects your assets in the event of a lawsuit uh, pertaining to that property. It can follow you as well. So um, say you've, you've done something on a vacation or somewhere, push somebody down the stairs and you're being sued, you know, don't do that. You know, it's not good, but um, it can follow you. So it's dependent on your assets, how much coverage you have. And we usually kind of have that conversation when clients come in so we can be sure there's enough coverage there. Um, a lot of limits start at 100,000 and we can go clear up into the millions just depending on um, each person's situation. But it's really when you're in a position where there's neglect. So we tell the story of um, you leave a lawnmower outside, somebody comes along and trips on it, you're negligent because you left that out, it's hazardous, it's a nuisance, 
you could be sued for that. So it's good to make sure you have enough uh, liability limits there when you're at fault for the accident. Are there, Tom just said, <laughs> don't, don't push people down the stairs. <laughs> don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> are there liability limits? There are, yep, there's different limits and um, it just depends on the, the individual client's assets. Um, and we can we can talk about that with a client. Usually they start around a hundred thousand, and we can go up from there, uh, case by case. Um, but it's important to have that. And most policies will come with some. You know, no matter what, you'll have some coverage. But make sure that it's enough. I'd like to go back to the the home part of this now. Um, okay. Let's talk about the riders that you can add. I believe it's called backup sewer and drain. That's one, yep. One and that's one that does it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's one important one. one. Yeah, yes. <laughs> uh, nobody likes to get those calls um, about uh, a backup in the, the home. It's never fun for the client to have to deal with. A standard homeowner's insurance policy doesn't come with water and sewer backup. So it has coverage for a sudden loss, like a pipe broke suddenly and it flooded. Um, the water and sewer backup many times, not always, but generally it comes back to a maintenance problem. So they didn't get the line clean, they had roots, they didn't know about, um, so it's not automatically covered. So we do visit with clients about that when they're starting their policy. Are they in a big tree area? Did they have the inspection done on the line? Did they run the camera through? Where are we at? And um, it's important to make sure that it's, it's a covered uh, peril that you talk about because nobody wants to deal with that. Um, that mess. Um, there's other um, endorsements. Um, I know we've talked quite a bit about like the uh, service line coverage that actually covers the line, the sewer line, the water line, the power line, all those lines to the house can be covered with an endorsement. So if you're concerned about that, those sewers can be, that line can be eight to $10,000 real quick. So we can add endorsements for that. Uh, we have the mechanical breakdown coverage that will actually cover your furnace, your AC, um, any of the units in the house that make the house run. That can be covered. Um, guns, jewelry, watches, furs are all endorsements that we speak uh, to a lot of clients about, and we can add extra coverage for that. So a lot of good things that you can go through and visit about. Our company's proposal is very thorough, and it um, it lists that out right on the the proposal so that you can see uh, the additional things that we need to visit about. And, and my staff's really good about sitting down with clients and discussing those things because we want to make sure that they're covered right. So Tom said that many, he's asking a question, many times you can purchase a third party insurance policy from the utility company. Do you think those have enough coverage or is this something that, or you do both or yeah, I haven't specifically gone through the, the third party policy. We do have a lot of clients that uh, will go ahead and add that on. I think the utility company does that for you and it'll cover the line. So it's, it's good to have that. Um, I'm not sure what the amount of coverage is. Ours maxes out at 10,000. So it does give you quite a bit of coverage. And with American National, it's included on every homeowner's policy. So it's not something that you have to add. It's just part of our package policy along with that mechanical breakdown coverage for the furnace. So a lot of folks will elect to go with that instead of adding that extra coverage at an additional cost. Um, but it probably isn't worth, um, it's worth looking at and just seeing, you know, what they would cover and what the costs are. It's a good idea. Lots of people want to know, how do I get a discount? How do I get a discount <laughs> on my home insurance? Right. Well, um, I would say bundling, you know, that's kind of a, a hot word these days. Bundling gives you the most um, discounts. So if you can bundle with your auto, with your life insurance, with your four wheelers, usually the more lines that you have, uh, the more discounts the company will give you because they want all of your business. So it works really well to do that. Um, other discounts, you know, um, would be how old um, some of your utilities are, how old's the furnace, how old's the AC, um, how old is the roof, which is a huge one. Insurance companies spend a lot of their times with claims on roofs. So um, if you have a newer, um, nice roof put on, um, companies can provide a great discount for having that. 
Um, otherwise, it just really depends on each client's specifics, you know, where they're at with their claims history, insurance risk score, um, all that good stuff is put into it. But those are the, the most common discounts are for bundling and uh, the utilities discount for having a, a newer roof or furnace or air conditioning system. So those work out really good. The other one now is um, the surveillance equipment. So the alarms and things in the house, the rain camera now qualifies with our company for a nice discount for the protective device. And a lot of people are um, putting those um, on. Just the doorbell camera can give you a discount on your homeowner's insurance. So um, it's a good idea to talk to your agent and see what they offer you. Definitely. Yep. There's been a lot more talk lately, especially with a couple of my clients, about umbrella policies. So will you kind of explain what that is and how that works? Yeah, sure. Um, that's great that they're visiting about that. And um, it's something that a lot of clients miss and might not know about. We try to have that conversation uh, when they're in. But basically, um, an umbrella policy will offer extra liability coverage over and above what's already covered by your standard policies with the carrier. Um, so for example, your homeowner's policy, we talked about liability. If you have 100,000 there, that got exhausted for some reason, the umbrella could go over and above that um, and provide more um, liability coverage to protect your assets. Um, most companies will require a minimum though. You have to have minimum liability coverages of some type on your auto in your home before you qualify for an umbrella because they wanna make sure that you're covered there with um, enough liability coverage first. But uh, really think of it just as an umbrella over and above all of your liability risks that are with that carrier. And it's really a good idea if you have assets um, to protect that. They're very reasonable to add on. And it just goes over and above uh, the rest of those policies. Um, helps avoid those lawsuits if you have teen drivers in the house, um, own quite a few different properties, have equity in your properties. Um, it's a good idea to protect that further. And we do those on the commercial level as well. So we can do an umbrella over and above for um, your business policies and whatnot. So it's a good idea to have that conversation no matter what product you're looking at and make sure that the liability is there. And the umbrella is just nice peace of mind to know that you're protecting you know, your assets. It just takes one missed stop sign to hurt somebody and you don't know what's gonna happen. So if they're hurt badly, your auto policy gets exhausted, the umbrella could be there to kick in and assist you. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. How do people go about when they're, you know, they're first time home buyers, right. they really don't know where to start to get a homeowner policy. So what, when they call you, what do they, what do they need? Um, it's best to gather up um, their personal information. Most carriers are going to need, you know, the full name that's going to be on the loan, their current address, their personal information. That's the easy part. And then with technology today, we can usually uh, get online and figure out most of the details about the house. So we make it pretty easy. It's just usually a quick phone call, give us some personal information, and then we go to work um, building that in the replacement cost system and working with your lender to see what any requirements they might have. Um, but we can do it as easy as a phone call. We do like to meet in the office once that's ready so we can go over those coverages. Uh, right now we're doing that by um, Skype and phone and email and doing some different things, but um, we love to sit down face to face and it's important that you do that. You don't wanna just take the, the cheapest quote that you got and run with it um, because you're not sure if it's really fitting, you know, what you need specifically. So that's pretty much it these days. Um, if you want to include, you know, auto and some different things, it's good to get together those current policies and uh, have those coverages available, VIN numbers, you know, just the details about the vehicles. Uh, we have access to some of that now in a database. So it's just gotten easier and easier to do a, a quote and get a comparison put together for you. Awesome. Is there anything else you want to add, Nick? I don't think so. Um, I think that is a good insurance 101. Um, I think we talked about the um, need for clients to make sure they understand their deductible. I think that's something we've ran across a few times with 
uh, different clients we've worked on together um, that they had no idea they had the higher wind and hail deductible. So I would make sure that um, folks know to talk about those deductibles ahead of time, talk about the endorsements and make sure everything's set up how they want it to be. Most insurance policies are fairly customizable so we can add things and take care of those coverages. So what about you? Any other questions? No, I think it's so important to always read what you're signing. I talk to my clients about that a lot. I recently had a gal who just, she said, oh, I trust you. Well, I love that you trust me, right. but you've only known me two weeks. And <laughs> you have to, I love that, but I want to show you wh where, I mean, I anybody can make a mistake. You've got right. to understand what you're signing before you sign it every time. Yep, I agree. And the other thing with that is when you get the policy, um, in the mail after you've done everything and signed it up, look through it, look through and read it. Um, it's dry. It's not the most entertaining stuff, but we get a lot of people that never read the policy and they have no idea that this is covered or that wasn't covered. Um, so it's, it's a good insured responsibility thing to read your policies when they come in and make sure that you're on the same page with your agent and your company. And that can save you some claims questions and headache down the road. Well, Nick, thank you very much. You did an amazing job and you can tell you really know the insurance business. And thank you for also, hopefully we're entertaining all of you while some of you are stuck at home. Right. So, um, right. We're going to do this every day at four o'clock. It will be someone else, someone new with me every time. And we have, we have a pretty good lineup coming up in the next week. So thank you, Nick. Yes. Thanks for having me. We appreciate all you do. Take care. Bye.